We are live. Good morning. It is me. It is I. It has been a while. Good morning, YouTube. What it be like? I was on a little vacay, YouTube. Literally. Took a little mini vacation. <sighs> breathing it in, breathing it out, man. Took a little mini family vacation. And, um, yeah. So, in that time, a lot of stuff happened. Like, I'm like, whoa. So, but because I wasn't moving, 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 I had an opportunity to kind of see it unfolding as it was unfolding. For those who just joined us, this is Amuna Yisrael, Solonomics. This is going to be a Solonomics session. So, you know, Solonomics, for those who don't know, the book is out, has been out on Amazon. It is a, a, a study of the soul and occurrences and things that happen in life and uh, looking at the root of our um, issues or our desires of where things come from essentially um, so definitely yeah that's solonomic so the way I look at things you're probably not gonna get it from different different places because I tend to look at it differently and so I wanted to do two things I had an opportunity to watch like I have to go out of my way to watch movies because I don't know, when I'm watching movies, I'll be like, man, this is a long movie. I sure could be doing something else. <laughs> so I, I did have some opportunity, some downtime. So I was like, okay. I see people making a lot of noise about this um, Tyler Perry's movie. Honestly, from the jump, I'm not a Tyler Perry fan because I'm not a fan of necessarily, even if, as, as we grow, I'm not a fan of promoting certain um, characters for progress, right? But this movie was very close. I was like, okay, let me see what's going on here. To some of the, um, that's the word I'm looking for, the complaints that the people have. Oh, it's, it's more of the same. This, that. I'm not sure that we the people, it goes, understand like media and the purpose of expression and the person who's holding the pen has to say it's a consumer based service of you production and consumption right that's kind of how it works everything is production and consumption people are complaining that his movies have a common theme one would stand to reason that this theme is and that oh the other day he took all the pictures of all the scripts and he's the only writer on all these scripts which i thought was funny but anyway he's the writer on all of these scripts and that's why they're all the same and they're very one-dimensional and the people complaining so you say you don't like that flavor so you don't right but to me it appears that the end and he, he said it a number of times this is his pain point why do you see the person keep retelling a similar story? The only reason you understand it is because they are in front of you via media and he has a, wor a broader reach than Uncle, you know, Uncle Juju, who's telling the same story, but only his family says, man, how many times are you going to say that same story? You know what I mean? Or Aunt Tuan Tuan, who has an issue in this area and so she keeps repeating the same story he's repeating the same story because it is a point of injury for him he witnessed abused he witnessed a certain type of woman and a certain type of man and he's expressing his inner self his broken self is expressing it and in some places he's changing the narrative to what he would have want to happen in other places he's leaving the narrative as it would have happened and that's basically what's going on with that so i watched the movie and at first i was like it's it wasn't that it wasn't that bad but i watched my dad i watched nollywood movies so you know i'm like it's not that bad it, i mean people are like nitpicking on the person is nollywood movies in you know a matter of days but nollywood is third largest entertainment industry behind Hollywood, Bollywood, and then there's Nollywood. Now they're getting better in recent years, but because their focus was communicating a story, whether the story cost a million dollars to produce or the story cost $5,000 to produce, 
the point is media the arts are supposed to transmit thought and i think in being uh hyper critical and being used to people uh spending 10 million dollars to produce a film blowing stuff up and building stuff and running stuff over and you know and then at the same time say hey we have hungry people in the world like whoa why are you producing this much money when at the end of the day the point is you're supposed to be communicating a thought so when you look at the thought in which he's communicating in this movie you will see that there's a vulnerability but well, i'll tell you what i saw how about that i don't have that out of the way He's highlighting the vulnerability of an elder, melanated woman who has gone through a breakup. I immediately, I don't know about how Stella got a group back, which by the way, I tried to read the book, hallelujah, for the movie on that one. Because the book was a whole wrong sentence. I'm like, anyway, I tried to read it. I promise you, I was like, yeah, this is a classic. I'm gonna try to read how Stella got a groove back. And I'm like, Yo, Dread, where's the punctuation? <laughs> anyway, so I immediately thought of that. And so we can have conversations on middle-aged women who have emptiness syndrome, who may be vulnerable, who forgot what it was to love, who's been through, uh, you know, the early 20s and the 30s and the 40s, and now they're in a space where... Um, like I said, they're vulnerable. Or some people may say, or somebody wants to come along and use them, or the dispensable, or whatever the case may be. But that's a real issue in our community, especially because there's a high rate of melanated women, even on today, who are not even getting married, who are career women, who do get to the point where, yeah, my career is on fleek, and my closet is on fleek, and all of that. But the relationship section, mad that the dude in the back wasn't uh drinking real water let's talk about the reality of why some people are getting scammed off the internet through these dating sites why people are getting catfished why women are lying about their ages why they are you want to know how i know because i watch a little thing called divorce court <laughs> when i be in the shop working i'll be watching like divorce court and you hear this stuff and you're like real thing so their conversation can be birthed out of what we're seeing instead of complaining that oh they had a bad wig wasn't on fleek you could say okay this man is being coached in the story i'm spoiler alert i forgot to say that i'm just gonna put it spoiler but y'all probably watch it already because i'm late this man is being coached by his woman let's talk about falsehood let's talk about people who be you to exploit you because that's what the, she said I knew her for six years so it's not somebody who she just knew somebody who's listening to you and um, hearing you out not because they have your best interest at heart but because they eventually want to exploit her and that's kind of spoiler alert that's what happens at the end of the movie this is real conversation the lack of trust in the community why is there a lack of trust because things like this happen for those who just joined us, I started talking already. I'm talking about the Solonomics view on this movie, um, A Fall from Grace. And listen to all of the critics and the dissenters and people. Like I said at the beginning, I'm not happy for uh, Tyler Perry because I really don't do the whole extracurricular stuff. Let me, I had some downtime. So I said, let me take a look at this movie. There were many points, like I said, along the way. The, the speech that she had, it's a real speech. And you know what I think? Some people are like, well, he's not a woman and he can't speak for women and he's writing the scripts by himself and da 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 da. Like I said, check out Nollywood, people. Nollywood has some banging storylines and you be seeing people in the back. I'm not saying you're not supposed to produce a quality product. Absolutely. I'm about quality products. But when you go overboard and you're making a big deal about the minor things and not seeing the overall picture, then you miss the point. You know what I'm saying? You miss the point. And so. A, we could talk about the vulnerability of elder, older women who um, do want to get back into the space where they're appreciated and loved and how they can be exploited in that space. We could talk about um, gigolos, people who are looking for sugar mamas and they will do what it takes. You see these memes going all over social media. It's tax season. 
if what he's saying is not accurate, then why do you have all of these memes and all of these jokes talking about, I'm going to get away from this truck now, y'all hold up. I don't like when these long big trucks pull up. And he ain't moving too. Why are you going so fast? Why are you going? I'm going to ease up. I'm going to pull up. You go. There you go. Yeah, so, um, what was I saying? You wouldn't have all of these memes that's talking about, oh, it's real. People do manipulate other people for monetary gain. People do pretend, especially in the world of social media, she she happened to get set up by a friend, especially in the world of social media. People get catfished all the time. So maybe the storyline didn't move. I thought that it moved. There were things that you could be like, eh, where you were able to follow the storyline and get to some of the morals. What did you do? What's the moral of the story? Is there a moral of the story? If you don't like the depiction, that doesn't mean it's not real. It just means that it made you feel a bit uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? But that doesn't mean it's not real. So maybe because I like looking at things that make people feel a bit uncomfortable so that we can grow through them, I didn't really see... A huge and also the lawyer lady. Good morning to the journalists. The lawyer lady had to find I mean there was a little bit of depth to these characters. The lawyer lady had to find her voice. She was used to taking the easy way out. She was on the verge of quitting. That's that's for those of us who are underachievers. We know we can do better, but we refuse to try because we don't want to fail. And so you take the easy way out as as, as, as instead of applying yourself. And if you fail, you fail and you get up and you try again. You understand what I'm saying? Like these are takeaways. Somebody right now somewhere in life is that loyal lady just going along to get along. I'm going to quit and I'm going over here and I'm going to do this because maybe it's going to be better over here. So that transitions me into this Kobe Bryant conversation. And uh, my thoughts and prayers go out to his family and the families of all of those who perished on um, um, last Sunday, he had a mentality that he became known for, which is the actual opposite of the lawyer lady, which is go all out, put all your energy and your effort into something, into being the best and being the greatest at what it is you do, right? And what it is that you want to accomplish. Now, I didn't really follow uh, Kobe Bryant because I haven't watched basketball in forever in two days. But when I'm looking at what was happening, like a lot of times, and you know, like last year, a little bit around this, a little later, when when Nipsey, I don't know why that one hit me the way it did. I don't know why I grieved that. I didn't even know Nipsey Hussle or listen to his music, but that one hit me a little bit. So now, in the passing of Kobe, as it seems to be, I, I like to go back and hear what the person was saying and what they were sharing and how they impacted those in and around them. And I came across this video of one of his friends. I think the man's name is Tracy McGrady. And the friend is saying that when they were younger, when they were teenagers, they knew each other from teenagers. How many people saw that video? When they were teenagers, Kobe would say, and there's lessons, I'm talking about lessons. So one lesson, one moral of the story that we're learning from him is that great things happen when you apply yourself, right? The other moral of the story is his friend said that he, being Kobe, would always say that he, being Kobe, wanted to die young. And his friend, Tracy McGrady, was like, yo, why, you know, why is he saying that? But when the interview was interviewed and he broke down crying, said he always said that. He always said he wanted to go out, you know, as a legend at the top of his game or whatever the case may be and i'm like the lesson here is our words in the same way that you say hey i want to be the greatest at this and you put your energy in your, uh, towards it our words have creative power this is why sometimes when you see me in a book and the person is saying something that i find sus i say they said it because you you put me in your order to the universe you don't you know what i mean the universe is like you read in a book or is this you talking? You know what I mean? So I feel even uncomfortable sometimes saying some stuff that the book is saying. Like when George, speaking there, bringing it all together, when George 
it on him because judge saying that i'm not saying that so the things that we see at our either our lowest point or in our infertile stages and in our winning stages there's if, if there's no thought in your mind that that thing that you said 20 years ago negatively will come back at the time when you least expect it and at the time he's saying it he didn't have children so you see what i'm saying this, this, this in the positive thinking world they say don't worry about the how you say what and the universe will take care of the rest and they say that on the positive side don't worry about the how but think about it how it also affects you on the negative side you put, you put in the order to the universe and say, this is what you want. At the height of you accomplishing all of what you've done, you want to go out in a blaze. You want to go out as a legend. And the same rules apply. Don't worry about the how. Especially the males. Especially the males. For those who subscribe to the... To, to the when you look at certain things that happen, the he makes a vow, no one can disavow it. He has to stand by that. Now, some people use it as a point of oppression. Like, yeah, the woman, if she make a vow, then the father could dis disavow her and make it null and void. But that's another conversation for another. But if the male makes a vow, then he has to stand up to that thing which he vows. It's talking about what it is you're professing out of your mouth, the creative power of what we're saying. This is lessons to take home. Another thing that came to me when I heard his friend say that was the title of when he made that album, what did he title it? That he was ready to die, D-I-E. And you, you kept saying it and 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 saying it. The same case with, these are all males. The same case happened with Nipsey Hussle. In the beginning of his story, in the beginning, like the, when, when they're young and they're full of, you know what I'm saying, full of ego and full of, full of machismo and full of all of this stuff. When he's younger, he's saying stuff like bullets don't have no name. This is not to get on those who've passed on. It's the lesson, like the more of the story, like what are we getting? When it's when it's media, we could just turn it off. You see what I'm saying? When it's TV, when it's Tyler Perry show, you don't like it, then you could just say how much you don't like it and then turn it off. But if we're going to value, if we're gonna truly value people's lives, we're all stories, we're all books. Some are just unread, some are just untold. But everything that happens to us, a story, a book, a movie, a song is narrating a form that it's enjoyable. It's putting it in a form that we can learn from it. So his life and the things that he's accomplished, we look at it now, you give the family opportunity to mourn. That's another thing. That's another thing. I'm gonna put a pin right there. Social media has so much that we've become callous, uncaring. Like the minute someone's soul departs, that transitionary period, the people have lost all connection with that. And now it is just about news. Who could break it first? The, to my understanding, TMZ broke this story before his family even knew. Like, come on, man. Like, imagine you drinking your morning coffee. Imagine the friends are there drinking their coffee or drinking their tea or getting or in the car. And you have to hear driving to wherever you're going or doing whatever you're doing. Back in the day, they used to be like, somebody picks up the phone. Hey, you sitting down? And hey, what are you doing right now? You could cause more injury to people because you don't care. Because you want to be the best to ever do it or the first to ever do it because you want the clicks and you want the views. So now nothing nothing is sacred anymore. Nothing has value beyond the attention uh, of monetary, it's, it's monetary gain or clout. It's like it's really, really, really gone bad. It's really gone bad until it happens to that person. Until it's that person, until the lens is turned around, until it's them, but up until that point, it's all good. These are things that we need to think about, um, you know, as we go forward. They said, do unto others as you would have them to do on to you. This whole, that whole part is missing. There's, there's no more doing unto others, it's doing to others, you better not do it to me. 
You know what I mean? And that that messes up the world. So that was crazy. I thought that was I thought that was a violation. You know what I'm saying? It it, it, it was crazy. But again, what can be learned from the things that are happening now? How can it better somebody left their code, their cheat sheet? their blueprint of how they accomplish and achieve and their principles and morals and what so you say i'm not, okay i do i want to end up there do i not want to end up there what can i use what can i not use what can i pass on when we when you go to school it's like Amuna, are you tripping no you go to school you learn american history what are you learning about you're learning about people who have passed on and the things that they have done and the things that they didn't do and the things that they could have done better when you learn about Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass, when you learn about uh, George Washington and and um, W.E.D. Du Bois, when you're learning about all these people, what are you learning about? I'll chill. I got to go this way. It's not just history unless it, it can be just history, but it doesn't come alive. It, is, it doesn't have value unless we unless we uh, leveled it up kind of in a way. So that that's my thoughts on that's my thoughts on the Tyler Perry movie is that learn something from it. You know what I mean? Like, does this really happen? It could be happening to your own family members right now. Somebody could be, somebody could be buttering up to somebody right now to, to make off with their tax money, to convince them to, to buy them a car, put a down payment, to convince them to marry them so that they could get over on them. Let's stop pretending like people don't do this kind of stuff. Now, Nathaniel says a good movie to me it had it had different dimensions and like I said different things that you could take away different things that you and Shalom says what's going on it had different things that you can take away and, and I, I think it's maybe because I don't watch a lot of movies like I said I'm not I don't watch a lot of movies because it takes a lot of time to like sit down one place and focus and watch a lot of movies so I don't watch a lot of movies but I watched this one because I had some time and because I'm like well, let me see what these people are complaining about now <laughs> you know what i mean like chronic complainers chronic i saw this um yesterday everybody the males are doing like the hashtag the girl dad and somebody wrote a whole piece in the new york post or whatever about why they don't like this hashtag girl dad i'm like yo dread if y'all don't get whole lives right now <laughs> Like, come on, man. You can't become hyper cynical of every single thing. You know, some things are just what it is. There is, and I've spoken about this before, there is a social, um, and I experience it daily. I have three, three daughters and one son. And socially, I've experienced it every time I go outside with them, or nearly, I would say, I'm going to do one of them statistics like they say, 97.2% of the time that I go outside with them, they look and see the girls and they say, oh, no, boy, this is in 2000, 2020, 2019, 2018. They look and see the girls and they say, um, oh, you don't have a son. And I'll be looking at them like. And then and then I almost have to keep catching myself by saying he's right there. But why do why do I have to say he's right there? Why does it make you feel better that I have a son? Why does it make you feel better that I have three, um, uh, that I have healthy children walking around? Why is it to you that if I don't have a son, then, oh, you have a lot of daughters. So what they're talking about, hashtag girl, dad, and the way society views you, it's true. Society does view having a son as more valuable than having daughters. I'm not telling you what I don't know. So I get it why it, it, because this is what they, they this is not only just like some far back bush place in india or some far back bush place in africa where oh you need a son because he's gonna till the land for you and he's gonna no 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 it's in first modern america where if you are walking around with nothing but female children you're going to see people coming up to you giving you strange looks and asking where is the penis, basically. 
yeah, 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 my bad, yeah, my bad. Anywho, I'm at the store, so I'm gonna run inside. Um, yeah, that was a spoiler alert. So, you know, I mean, leave your thoughts in the in the box below. Uh, the phone rang, that's why it kind of went out. But sorry. So to recap, so I'll recap for those who just joined us. To recap, I didn't think the movie was terrible. It had some weirdness, but that's that person's steez. You know what I mean? If you go to this person's spot, then that's their steez. That's what you expect to get from them because that's what it is that they do. Um, I think that Tyler Perry's pain point is abuse of women because he said it in times past. That's what he's experienced. Um, you're going to see it manifested in different ways. It's like it's it's like a um, it's like a Tony Braxton song. Tony Braxton's pain point is what it is. You're not going to see necessarily Tony Braxton be like, you know, in this dancery, she's not going to be doing the Mary J. That would look weird. You're like, well, Tony, what you doing? You know, sometimes people box themselves in and sometimes other people box them in. I think in his case, he's boxed himself in, in this narrative and he feels the need to continue to retell this narrative until he finds a space to heal from it I'll, I'll just share one more thing i was um there was a documentary on that was done on richard Pryor, and everybody you know comics always like they're richard Pryor, richard Pryor. there's the best the best to ever do it best to ever do it and i didn't know this but solonomic wise solonomically right i'm like it makes total sense so i didn't know because i never really follow i'm you're surprised before my time but you hear comics of today speak of Richard Pryor. I didn't know that Richard Pryor grew up in a family that were, um, he grew up in a whorehouse and that his family was into prostitution and that his grandmother was a madame and then kind of like, um, he kind of has that look that R. Kelly has in his eyes. When I was looking at some of the tape and, and throughout the documentary, I'm like, that look looks so familiar that's in his eyes. And so he grew up seeing, according to his narrative, he grew up seeing his mother prostituted and his father the pimp. And so he goes on to talk about the very same thing that he couldn't get beyond that childhood injury. And so the drugs that he was taking, the stories that he was telling, a lot of these comedians, especially mentally comedians, are sharing their deepest pain. And although laughter helps to raise the vibration, after they have shared it and gotten this feedback from the audience, which is this laughter, it's a temporary, it's temporary. After you've laughed at their pain, they continue on with this pain. And so you see a lot of comedians have highs and lows you see what i'm saying they have this space where they're able to laugh at it and then they have like this deep depression of when it's no longer funny because that pain is still there that hurt is still there you know what i'm saying and they don't know how to fix it one of the women i didn't know he married like seven different women but one of them said like he wouldn't let you come close enough to even think that you're going to try to fix it so in what in ways was he injured and in what ways was he trying to see or uh you know how this therapy of sharing basically it's like self-therapy you get on the stage and you tell all your business um and you get people's reaction in hopes that it'll fix it but it doesn't so then you turn to drugs or you turn to you turn to illicit behavior you turn to all of these things these are all soul injuries so when we're looking at, if you don't learn anything that I, from what I share, when you look at something that you think is problematic and it's surface and the person keeps repeating, like in the case of R. Kelly, he keeps repeating the same behavior over and over. In the case of Richard Pryor, in the case of, of Tyler Perry, it's a soul injury that is so deep that just topical things are not able to, to ease that pain. You see uh, Robin Williams, that was his name? Robin Williams, the one who had depression. You see Jim Carrey, who's another um, comedian that has like this bout with what, what he's having a bout with. So this entertainment world, 
this entertainment world, it's quote light and it has a very dark side. This light is only very temporary. They have to plug, plug in all the lights and you go on the stage and it's all of this smoke and mirrors and all of this kind of stuff like this. And that's the temporary part. And behind it is all the darkness. It's all the darkness that the people are experiencing and to a certain degree it's exploitation for your entertainment. It's exploiting the person for entertainment purposes. And so if there wasn't a consumer, there wouldn't be a producer. So somewhere, somehow, we the people, I'm going to say we the people, so they'll be like, I'm going to, you're talking about we the people, somewhere, somehow, enjoy looking at what someone else's pain creates. And so when we say, well, what can we do about it? We not, we not, um, we not the producers and we not the this. Yeah, they're making it for you. They're producing it for you. They were talking about the Richard Pryor conversation and saying at the beginning he was doing something and it was robbing his soul because it wasn't really who he was. And he was doing it for the consumption of the people so that they can accept him. But when he began to do it for himself to a certain degree, that's when all the darkness started coming out. That's when all the pain started coming out. Because when you go to some of these places, they try to tell you, well, write this because this is what's going to sell. And do this because this is what's going to sell. You know what I'm saying? And this is what, what the people want. But then that person is like, well, this is it's not me. So they're putting on a mask over a mask. And then when you see them crack... And you see them break. And then you're like, oh, this person is crazy. Oh, this person is delusional. Okay. This entertainment industry is a, is a place where people get exploited. So to a certain degree, we need to stop the exploitation. There's people marching around, you know, the way you deal with animals, there's a humane way you deal with animals. Animals are being exploited and they, they're marching against organizations against the way animals are being exploited. Like some of these comics, I'll just say this and I'll leave. I had a little time on my hands. So I was like, okay, I got Netflix. I'm playing for Netflix. I don't watch Netflix. Let me see what's going on in Netflix. Do, 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 do. Right? And I'm looking at some of these comedians, melanated, and I'm like... I didn't laugh one time in one hour. I'm like, yo, this stuff is not funny. This is not funny. And it's not just like, oh, this is not your taste. It's like you are straight buffooning right now. You are exploiting yourself, pimping yourself for a laugh. And it's not even funny. And they're not laughing with you, dear. They're laughing at you. And you say, I'm trying to get this money. I'm trying to get this bag. At what expense? And that's where they talk about selling your soul. At what expense? You're going to violate your own constitution so that you can survive only to understand that none of it, none of this material world, none of this material construct, and this is what the people know who are getting you to do this stuff. None of this material construct, not even the body, goes with you. Out of all the money, I didn't even look at how much he was worth, but out of all the money that Kobe had generated, okay, to arrest him at this point, at all, out of all the money that came and went, out of all the houses, how about that? Out of all that, you don't take none of that. Let that simmer. That's the end of the lesson. Let that simmer. The, the poor and the rich have one thing in common. They all have one thing in common. So it's not to say do the best. It's not to say don't, don't, don't reach for the stars. It's not to say any of that. It's to say to keep it in perspective. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when your number is called, all of this is not what matters. <laughs> they say, Amuna, what matters? You're going to have to figure that out. And for some, oh, that's when he was making all this noise, mister, in, in, in the parking lot, mister. You know, like loud noises in the morning. Anyway, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and run. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. I know I've been missing the action for a minute. Oh, yeah, I'll come back and talk to you guys. I went to um, Eatonville 
So I'll share my thoughts on Eatonville. We went to Eatonville um, when we were it's outside of Orlando. So we were in Orlando. We went there. And that's the first melanated incorporated. Let me see. The first incorporated black town in all of the United States. Incorporated in 1887. So we went there. And that was interesting. So we'll come back and talk about that. But with that said, I'm going to go ahead and run. Because I got to go inside. Oopsie.